Find the number of scores in a population, given that the population mean is 7 and the sum of my x values, the sum of my scores, is equals to 42. So either it's 6, it's 294, it's 7 divided by 42, which gives me 1 over 6 when I uh, reduce that fraction, or I don't have enough information. Well, given that we know it's a population, and we've been given the mean, and we've been given the sum of x, and we're asked about the population size, if you're, if you're uh, presented with a situation like this where you have some quantities and, and then there's one that you don't know, try and find a formula that involves all of these. And it should be pretty simple to recognize that this is the formula that involves all three of those quantities. Now this formula is set up to give us, uh, to calculate what the population mean is. But of course we already know that. We already know that it's 7. And we already know what the top of the fraction is. It's 42. What we don't know is n. And this is what we want to, um, we want to isolate that. When I say isolate, I mean we want to get this formula through some series of magical steps to get to a point where it's n equals to something. So the way that we do that is to follow two simple rules. When you're dealing with an equation, there's two things that you do in order to isolate a value or to solve for that value. The first is, if you see something happening in the formula that you want to undo, just do the opposite. For example, I've got 42 divided by n here. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see anything divided by n. I want n to be over here on this side. So I've got to undo that. So the first thing that I do is do the opposite of what I'd like to undo. But now that brings in the second rule. You can't just change an equation and expect it to still be true. For example, if I've got um, 10 divided by 5, that equals to 2. Well, if I multiply this side by 5, this isn't going to be true anymore. 10 divided by 5 was equals to 2, but now I've got 5 times 10 divided by 5. That's the same as 50 divided by 5, this side here would be equals to 10, and it would be like saying that 10 equals to 2. That doesn't work out. So instead, what I have to do is I have to multiply both sides by 5. Then I've got 2 by 5 is 10. This would tell me that 10 equals to 10, and that would be true. So if you're going to multiply by 5 on the one side, you have to multiply by 5 on the other side. Whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other side. So. Uh, let's make this a little bit easier to read. I'll do 7 times n, and so um, I'm going to have 7n. really doesn't matter how I write it. I could write n times 7. 7 times n doesn't really make any difference. These two will cancel each other out, and I've got 42. So 7 times n is 42. Well, I don't want 7 times n. I just want n is equals to something. So I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to divide both sides by 7. So these will cancel, and 42 divided by 7, that gives me 6. So my answer is that n equals to 6.